Welcome back to Share a Sandwich. This is Mary Kay. I'm super excited this week because I have Erica Kurzawa on, who is one of my favorite Instagram accounts, as I say like 30 times in the podcast. She is an expert in all things amusement park, and you should definitely follow her on Instagram. I will be posting this. She is Erica Enchanted, and you will love her account. It is pure, pure joy on every level. So she has some fantastic answers to the questions. And I think that her superpower is one of my favorites so far. So let's get into it. I'm so happy you could do this. Yeah, I'm happy to. I love your Instagram so much. It's one of my favorite Instagrams ever. Oh my gosh. No way. Thank you. <laughs> it's I'm always like sending the pictures to people. I'm like, look where Eric is. Look what they're doing. Aww. It always looks like so much fun. I appreciate it. Thanks so much. Of course. Um, Okay, so I'm going to read your bio. So we have it up at the top. Um, So today we have, oh, and I was going to ask you, I have never said your last name out loud. Oh, it's Kurzawa. Kurzawa. Okay. I was a very American way to say it. It's Polish. It's actually like Kurzawa, but I don't like saying it that way because I say it wrong. (laughs) So I just say Kurzawa. Kurzawa. Okay. So today we have Erica Kurzawa. Erica is a digital content creator with a passion for film, fiction, and all things pop culture. As a millennial mom, woman of color, and self-proclaimed film geek, she aims to create space in her online communities for fellow nerds from all different backgrounds to feel seen and feel comfortable being their most authentic selves. That's an amazing bio. Thank you. (laughs) I would say you accomplished that online. Well, thank you so much. I really try to. I really try to just create a welcoming space because obviously being a black woman, I didn't always grow up having the representation that I felt like I needed to participate in those spaces. So I'm trying to make sure that I create a space where people feel welcome, no matter who they are. That's amazing. I mean, you know, and nerds too, like nerds need to feel. Exactly. exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's amazing. I love, I love everything about that. And I seriously, when I go on Instagram, your Instagram is one of the few Instagrams that I check. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Because <laughs> stuff gets lost, as you know. Yeah, for sure. Um, so first off, I was going to ask you, do you have you ever watched 30 Rock? Like, is this the show 30 Rock and Liz Lemon familiar to you at all? I haven't watched 30 Rock. And it's one of those things where I feel like I'm missing a whole pop culture thing because people reference it so often. I am familiar with Liz Lemon. I know who she is, but I was not familiar with the sandwich quote when you sent it. It's a it's a pretty good that she's a she's a big eater so she's constantly shoving sandwiches and things in her face um, and you are a millennial so you're a little young I'm a Gen Xer so I'm a little bit older um, but someday when you need a show to watch highly recommend it's on my list absolutely it's, you know and it's one of those dumb shows that you'll just get crammed in your head. <laughs> Um, Okay, so I sent you the questions and you have your answers prepared. However, I'm going to ask you one icebreaker um, that I did not ask you in advance. And that is, what is your go-to karaoke song? Oh, my go-to karaoke song. (laughs) It's funny because I'm not a fantastic singer and it's like the most ambitious song you can choose, but I love to sing Defying Gravity. (laughs) (laughs) That's amazing. That's great. (laughs) I I just always go straight for that one just because it's so much fun. I mean, why not? And everyone knows it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's fantastic. Um, Okay. So on to question one, Uh, what is your favorite TV show or movie you have watched recently? So I just finished season two of The Bear. Oh, so good. I absolutely fell in love with it. Like from season one, people kept saying, you got to watch The Bear, you got to watch The Bear. So season two came out and I went back to season one and It was kind of a slow build, but I was intrigued because they don't give you too much right away. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what is going on here? Like, so I, I, it's kept me interested, but once you get to know these characters and you get to watch their journey and their growth, ah, it's just the most heartfelt, heartwarming series, but also very real. They don't make the characters perfect. And I love that. I love a flawed character. I actually was just talking to someone about the show and I always mispronounce her name, um, Ayo Berry. I don't know if I'm pronouncing her I, name. I think, I, I'm not sure. I think it's Ayo Berry, but I'm Ayo obsessed Edaberry. with her. Obsessed. So I love her. And I will watch anything with her in it. Um, but I noticed she got nominated for supporting actress for this. And I was surprised because I would have thought that it would have been her and him would have been, or she and him would have been the top two cast, right? And so for her to be supporting, I was like, hmm. Yeah, I agree. I don't know who they would, 
consider the female lead on that show if not her right so they nominated him whose name I can never remember mm -hmm. and um and then she got supporting and I was kind of like it, that kept coming up in my brain and every time now people talk about the bear I'm like yes because she's one of my favorite parts of it I think she's like an integral character to the story she literally is I mean she is the one who kept me interested in season one before I started caring about the other characters but I was immediately like this girl came into this restaurant. She clearly knows all her stuff. She's good at what she does. Why is she here? Why is she putting up with this? Like I had so like, oh, she just brought so much to that character. Yeah. And the chemistry and the relationship between her and Bear is just so sweet and so beautiful. Yeah. And her all the stuff with her dad this season, I thought was really sweet and, and showed a whole other side of her and what was happening with her. That's why she got so much time with her personal life. I thought she's not supporting. Those are not supporting scenes. Absolutely. I agree. Yeah, I need to Google it because I'm sure other people are talking about it too. People who know way more about it than I do. Um, okay, so number two, what is your new or favorite book you have read recently? So I'm currently reading what might be my favorite book I've read all year. It's called The Fourth Wing. Oh. I'm drawing a blank on the author. I meant to write it down and I didn't. I can add it. Um, but it is a fantasy. It's a fantasy story. Um, it's basically about, it's set in this world where dragons exist, griffins exist, but it's, I guess it's kind of more of like the, the country's at war. So you have one side that's, you know, they're fighting with dragons. So the humans bond with dragons and they're dragon riders. Then you have the other side that they're fighting against and they're fighting with griffins. And it's the story of this girl whose mother is a general in the dragon army and she was a right. And you have, there's different things that you can be. You can be a scribe, which are like, they're historians. Um, but the dragon riders are obviously the most respected, but they also have the shortest expected lifespan because you're messing with dragons and mm -hmm. also you're on the front lines. So this girl, she spent her whole life training to be a scribe. And that's what she was passionate about. That's what her father was before he passed away. But her mother's this general in the army. And she's like, no Sorengale, their last name, is going to be a scribe. Like, you're going to be a writer, like your brother was, like your sister is, and like I am. And so she, everyone thinks, she's like very small and petite, not really a fighter. And so everyone thinks that her mother's basically given her a death sentence. So oh. she enters this, um, this unit, or her wing is the fourth wing. And it's just about her just kind of like, overcoming these obstacles and thriving and learning and I don't want to give away too much because it's such a great story and a great journey but it's also like very uh like romantic and oh. like kind of spicy moments and it's it's really it's really fun it's really it's definitely like definitely falls under the YA category which is one of my favorite guilty pleasures just because it's so yeah. fun and easy to read uh, but I like it a lot. That sounds like a good blend of like empowering and inspiring, but also like adventure. And yeah. you know, that's great. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. I'm gonna have to look that one up. Um, follow up question to that. If you wrote a book about your life, what would the title be? <laughs> Passionate, but fickle. Oh, <laughs> I like that. Intriguing. I would definitely read that book. I feel like it just sums me up in a nutshell. I I feel very passionately about a lot of things, but my attention span is not always the longest. And I also, I'm someone who's like not afraid to change my mind. Yeah, that's which is powerful because I yeah. think it's one of those things, like I've been talking to a lot of people, like I have a kid in college now. So everyone's like trying to force her to sort of like be in this path. And it's like, you can change what you're doing Absolutely. a times over your life. Don't worry about it. Um, so what is something you wish you had done more when you were younger? This is probably the most cliche answer, but taking more risks. I really, mm -hmm. truly wish that I had just, I was a very safe and careful kid. And I just really wish I had just kind of like taken more risks, put myself out there more, made more mistakes. That's a good one. Because I mean, the thing is, is that something that you can still do? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I try and I try to do that more. I try to even I have terrible social anxiety, but I still and I find myself in my career always in these huge social settings. Um, and so I've kind of had to learn to just kind of like force myself to just put myself out there. And if I do or say something weird, I'm like, I probably don't have to see that person again. <laughs> 
That's impressive. I also have social anxiety and I would never in a million years from looking at your presence online think, oh, she's struggling. So you're, I mean, it must be exhausting. You probably go home. Like for me, I'll go home and take like a 45 minute nap after I have to interact with people that much, but. Yeah. Lots of naps, lots of self-care, lots of downtime. Um, But the thing is, and I find with a lot of my content creator friends is that the reason we get into digital content creation is because you can do it from a distance. You everything, you know, now I'm out in the world a little bit more, but you start just with you and your camera and your phone and it's just you and it's a way to be social and put yourself out there without the risk of actually being out in the world. That's an interesting take on that. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually. And and that maybe that plays into, you know, how we all did. Some of us did really well during the pandemic being at home alone mm-hmm. and other people. <laughs> I, I talked to so many people who were like climbing the walls and going crazy. I'm like, no, it's fine. Like I was, I mean, it was hard to be at home, but, yeah. um, but I think some of us did a little bit better being alone. Mm-hmm. For sure. Um, okay. What is a nonprofit or organization you are passionate about? I love the organization. It's called Black Girls Code, and they are dedicated to helping more Black girls and women get into STEM fields, um, specifically like coding and digital programming and things like that. And I just, they have um, they have camps and workshops and all kinds of things. I just think it's the coolest thing ever. That's awesome. I just read uh, recently that the Black Girls Code book is one of the most top book, top banned books, I think, in Florida, which, uh, of course it is. which is crazy. It's like, it's a book about girls going into STEM and people, it's, uh, why are you banning? I was, it blew my mind because I keep falling down these rabbit holes of banned books. Mm-hmm. And, um, that one was very surprising to me. Yeah. There's a lot of really surprising books on those banned lists. And I just, I don't know. It's, it's very, very bizarre. Florida's a weird place though. <laughs> I would imagine you have to go there for work sometimes. So we won't. Like, I do. I'm actually going tonight. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leaving for Orlando tonight. And it's, it's wild because when I'm there, I'm in my little theme park bubble. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I don't really feel like I'm in Florida. I feel like I'm in Disney or in this case, I'm going to Universal. So I feel like I'm in Universal, but um, yeah, I just thinking about everything that's going on around those spaces. And I, I, I just don't know. And it's almost getting to a point where I'm like, do I want to keep going there? Is it safe to keep going there? It's starting to feel a bit hostile. Yeah, no. I mean, I've had conversations with several people who've gone to Florida and had really hostile interactions with people and, you know, not to like get into it too much, but it's just, it's interesting because you have to think about your personal safety sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. So if you could have a superpower, what would it be? This one was easy because I have always, this is a question I get asked a lot because I'm a nerd. But I would have the power to heal. I I've just never heard that one. Really? I, I know everyone always wants to read minds or fly. I, first of all, I do not want to be in anyone else's head. It's already convoluted enough in my own mind. I don't want to hear what's going on in yours. Um, flying sounds cool in theory. It also just seems like there'd be like such a learning curve. And then there's airplanes and birds. And I don't know. But I feel like the power to heal would be so useful. Oh. There's been so many you know friends lost and illnesses that have been caught if they had been caught earlier they could have you know survived and so I'm just like if I had this power to just heal people magically without you know science or medicine that would be great so oh, that would that's a really beautiful power you would be very busy like <laughs> so busy but also selfishly I wouldn't have to worry about my kids as much because I just feel like oh I could just touch you fix you up you're right. fine <laughs> Whatever they get into, it'll be fine. No problem. Yeah, yeah. that is that is a stressor. So I would get rid of that one. Oh, that's a really good superpower. Okay, follow up to that. What is your superpower? Something a lot less cool. Something that's some, uh, both a blessing and a curse. I have a really, really crazy strong sense of smell. Oh. I can smell things uh, from a mile away. I can smell bread going bad before it's moldy. I can smell cigarette smoke like a mile away it's a pain I don't know if it's useful but <laughs> it's something it's just something that I have that's fantastic did you ever get COVID or did you ever I I did actually I got COVID after the vaccine so it was very mild very chill and I never lost my sense of smell or taste I was yeah in all the times I had I've had it three times I never lost smell or taste so yeah. some people just do and some people don't 
Yeah. That's a really good superpower. Um, and you could actually use those two together. You could kind of smell on the breeze things that were happening and go to people. That's true. That's true. That's great. Um, okay. What is the last thing, um, song, podcast, book, whatever you listened to on your phone? So I was actually listening to, this was two days ago. I was listening to Misguided Ghosts by Paramore oh. it's on their brand new eyes album because um, last night we were celebrating one of my best friend's birthdays and he's the biggest Paramore fan in the world ever. He's seen them live like 26 times now, I think. Oh my goodness. Um, but that that's one of his like favorite songs that we've had a conversation about. And he's also very into like Halloween and horror and spooky things like me. So I bought him a plush ghost and then I put one of those little sound recorder things inside of it that, and it plays misguided ghosts when you squeeze it. <laughs> That's a really great gift. I bet he loved it. He did. I was like, it's so dumb, but here, just open it. And he was like, oh, this is cute. So yeah. Wow. Those dumb <laughs> gifts sometimes are the best because he'll take it with him. He can listen to it anytime. Yeah. Know. It's a really soft pillow too. And he travels a lot. So I'm like, oh, he can maybe use it as an airplane pillow or whatever. Totally. That's a good one. Like that. Um, what is your favorite dinosaur? I love the bronchiosaurus. Is that the long neck ones? I'm, yes. I'm, yeah, those. I've just always wanted to like ride one. Movies always portray them as being so sweet and gentle. And they're just always like chewing on some leaves from a tree, like giraffes. And I just, I think they would be so cool to just like sit there and watch. Yeah. It feels like you could be lying in the field next to them and they would leave you alone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. Um, next question. What is a word you say too much? I am a California girl and I say like way too much. I'm very aware of it. So I tried, I've tried to force myself to not say like all the times, but I definitely like slip back into my mm -hmm. like, like, like a lot. I also say literally way too much when mm -hmm. I'm not meaning literally, but that's also a California girl thing. <laughs> I was going to say, that's a very California thing. I do both of those as well. Like, yeah. I just did it. Uh, yeah. No, someone the other day said I was talking and they were counting how many times I was saying like in my story, like, you know, just to tease me about it. And they said, you said like 26 times while you were talking. <laughs> okay. That's officially too many times. Yeah. Okay. What is your favorite or desired celebrity sighting or person you want to meet? I really want to meet the Smith family, like Will Smith, Jada Smith, and the kids. I I just think they're so cool. And they seem like they have this dynamic together that's just like so genuine and loving and nurturing. And I think it would be really cool to just like actually meet them and like hang out and like just talk to them individually because they're all so different too, but they're just like this family mm -hmm. unit, the way they present themselves. Yeah. And you could have some really cool intergenerational conversations because they've got, you know, all the people involved. And uh, yeah, no, I agree. I think that they sound pretty fantastic. I heard a story once of someone who met them on a boat somewhere and they like just were the nicest people ever. Like, I bet I've actually met Will Smith twice, but yeah. it was in a setting that was like, well, OK, so the first time I was on a field trip and we were, my school was in Culver City right across the street from, I think it was Sony Studios. I was like 10 and we were going to a taping of the Wheel of Fortune, but Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was filming next door mm -hmm. and he just happened to walk past us and we all lost our minds. He wasn't like the mega superstar that he is now, but he was still the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So we were just very excited and he was just so sweet and he like spoke to us and said, hello, it was very kind. Um, and then I also met him at recently, a couple years ago, at the premiere for Spies in the Skies, which was his animated oh, movie from yeah. Blue Sky with Tom Holland. And um, that one, again, it was like a professional setting. He was kind of just, you know, everyone was going up to him, saying hello, meeting him, taking pictures and stuff. So it was a very quick interaction, but he was still very gracious, very nice, very kind. Mm -hmm. but I would That's love great. to meet him just casually. Yeah, I was going to say, like, what would your ideal situation be to meet them? I would want to meet them at like a house party, like just come to find out we have a mutual friend and we just happen to both be there. And it's a very like laid back, no cameras, they're just being themselves kind of situation. Yeah. You could have the best interaction that way, probably. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, okay. And to your last question, uh, what is your favorite type of sandwich or sandwich like food? Okay. Question to this question, because it might affect my answer. Does a taco count as a sandwich? Yes. 
It does. Okay, great. Tacos all day, every day. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I was saying to somebody the other day uh, when we were talking about this question, like, you have you ever seen anybody be sad while eating a taco? Like, no, no one. Literally no. Because you can't be. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the sandwich is kind of, I think everybody sort of has a different version of what a sandwich is, but it's just like, you know, a compact thing that you put something in and then you eat it. What's your favorite kind of taco? Um, I am pescatarian. So I would say a fish taco. I, mm -hmm. I love like a, a fried fish taco with like the, I make mine with like a coleslaw and then I do this like chipotle sauce. Yeah. It's really good. Um, but I also love like Beyond Meat. And I'll season that up with just a, but pre-vegetarianism, I would love just like a carne asada street taco, which mm. is like the little homemade tortillas, the carne and the um, cilantro and onions. I could eat a million of those back to back. So many, so yeah. many tacos. Oh, that is delicious. Uh, I love it. Well, this was great. This went really fast yeah. and you were well prepared. You had all your good answers, right? <laughs> um so thank you so much for doing this I really appreciate it thank you so much for having me this was super fun it was fun like answering these questions and I just I love answering questions it's like one of my favorite things I love those games where it's just like you're asking questions to get to know each other so this is such a great idea for a podcast yeah no me too and I, I've had so many conversations with people post-covid where people talk about how much they hate small talk Mm -hmm. and how like getting to know people now is a little more challenging than it was before and being in rooms with people. And so having little icebreakers and questions that make you, you know, force you to answer something in a way that maybe you wouldn't with a little bit more thought. And I think it's yeah. fun. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you so much for coming. And I hope you have a safe trip this week and have thank fun you. at Universal. Thanks. Safe travels to you too. Thank <laughs> you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye. Nobody in all of us, no wizard that there is or was.